Hello everyone. I'm Ankit. I'm a PhD student at the University of Utah. I'll talk about our new operating system, NROS, in this video. This is joint work with Jinmay and Ryan from the University of Utah, Reto from the University of British Columbia, Irina, Amy, and Gar from the VMware Research, and Sanida from EPFL. Kernel development is hard because of complex code that has to deal with manual memory management, type and safety, and complex and asynchronous event handling. And writing correct high performance kernel code is only getting harder as the number of cores and NUMA nodes per machine grows. One simple approach to manage this complexity is to implement sequential version of kernel data structures and then use black box approaches like coarse screen looks to make them safe under concurrent operations. However, Contention on coarse grain locks usually degrades the performance as more core access the same data structure. Here is an experiment that shows that big locks are bad for contended workloads. This benchmark allocates one physical frame and repeatedly maps it in virtual address space of the process to measure the synchronization overhead of the Linux virtual memory subsystem. This experiment was performed on a four socket machine with 24 cores per socket. The x-axis shows the number of cores used for the benchmark and y-axis shows the throughput as million operations per second. Linux performs reasonably well for a single core. It maps over 1 million addresses in one second. However, the throughput decreases sharply when we add more cores to the benchmark. For 96 cores, the contention overhead is so high that the throughput is almost 100x lower than single core performance. Monolithic kernel solves this problem with varying degree of success, like we have just seen, using fine grain locking and other specialized synchronization mechanisms such as RCU, etc. Many of them are ad hoc approaches and don't work in a black box manner, like, for example, coarse grain locks. Even though these mechanisms improve the multi core performance, it is hard to reason about such one off solutions for large software projects such as an op OS kernel. Because of that, we see many synchronization related bugs get introduced and fixed in Linux kernel over time. And we have all experienced the result of kernel bugs. Research systems like the Barrelfish multi kernel are interesting in this context because Barrelfish takes an entirely different approach for concurrency. It scales by foregoing shared memory and divides resources among per core kernels. In Barrelfish, kernels are entirely single threaded entities without locks or concurrency. However, a user space monitor needs to coordinate the kernel operations that need agreement. And even though hardware provides a cache coherence mechanism, Barrelfish uses explicit message passing and complex distributed protocols in user space. So while Barrelfish solved the complexity problem in the kernel space, it trickled into the user space components. In the remainder of this talk, I'll present a new multi-kernel design called the NR kernel, which addresses this tension between performance and complexity. The NR kernel relies on sequential implementation of its core subsystems and transform these structures into scalable concurrent ones using black box techniques, just as core slogs do. Unlike Barrelfish with per core kernels, the NR kernel maintains a kernel replica on each NUMA node, and all the cores on a node share a single replica. Per node kernel replicas makes all accesses to the kernel state NUMA local, which minimizes costly cross node traffic through QPI. Instead of using distributed commit protocols in user space, the NR kernel replicas are synchronized with the shared operation logs. Next, let's take a closer look at the NR kernel and see how it works. Here is an overview of NROS. The NR kernel provides three main subsystems, virtual memory, scheduling, and in-memory file system. The NR kernel maintains a replica on each NUMA node, which means all kernel data structures like page tables, files, and other, other structures are replicated. The NR kernel replicas are synchronized with the help of operation logs. An application making a system call will always access a NUMA local replica. And since we guarantee linearizable replicas, the syscall always returns a consistent result irrespective of the replica location. 
In the next few slides, using the example of NRVMEM, I'll explain in detail how the NR kernel transform a sequential implementation of an individual subsystem into a scalable concurrent implementation using our black box approach. The first black box technique used by NROS is called node replication or NR. Let's see how NR protects and transforms the virtual memory code into a concurrent version. Our virtual memory subsystem is very similar to Linux example we saw earlier. It also uses two sequential data structures, a B tree for metadata and a Redix tree for page tables. Similar to Linux, NR uses a big reader writer log to make a sequential structure concurrent. However, it uses additional mechanisms to reduce the log contention for writes to the underlying data structure that I'll explain later. NR maintains a replica of the underlying data structure on each NUMA node and all the cores on a node share a replica. These replicas are synchronized through a shared log. Write operations are replicated through the log and read operations are executed directly against the local replica without appending them to the log. The write operation we look at in this example is map, which inserts a new physical region into the address space. Assume that one or more threads from replica one or replica two or both issue some map operations. These operations are added to the shared log and later threads from both the replicas apply these operations on their local copy. The blue entries in the log are full and white are empty. Currently, there are four map operations in the log and both the replicas have applied these operations. Now, let's look at how do write operations work. Assume that four different threads on replica one issued map operations. These operations would be bashed in a local buffer as shown by the different color boxes. To append the operation to the log, NR maintains a log tail variable. The log tail represents the next usable entry in the log. One thread among the four threads that has outstanding map operations becomes a leader or combiner for replica one by acquiring a log. And the combiner reserves the space in the log by atomically incrementing the log tail. After reserving the entries, the combiner thread adds the operations to the log. NR uses an optimized reader's writer log to convert the sequential data structure to a concurrent one. So, to apply the newly appended entries to the local replicas, the combiner thread acquires the log in the writer mode and updates the local replica. Now, let's look at how does a read operation work. Assume that a thread issued a read operation result on replica 2. Resolve is used to look up a mapping in the address space. NR makes sure that all the read operations are performed on an up-to-date version of the replica. Suppose the local replica is not up-to-date. Then one of the reader threads become a combiner and applies the outstanding operation to the local replica by acquiring the lock in the writer mode. Once the local replica is up-to-date, the read operation is executed against it. So, in summary, for read intensive workloads, NR improves the performance due to NUMA local accesses, and for contended write workloads, NR improves the performance due to batching at the combiner thread and less contention because only one thread applies all the write operation at a time. Sounds great in theory, but does this actually perform in practice? Let's see. One immediate benefit of the page table replication with NUMA local reads is that any read intensive workloads with the little TLB reuse will run faster. To show this, we ran memcached on Linux and NR kernel. NR kernel implements the sequential version of the virtual memory subsystem and uses node replication to make it concurrent, as explained before. The y axis in the figure shows the throughput achieved by the memcached. For this benchmark, NROS memcached performs 31% better than Linux version. For the same benchmark, we also measured the number of cycles spent in the page table box. As shown in the right hand side of the figure, NROS takes 36% less CPU cycles to finish a page work than Linux due to NUMA local memory accesses during the page box. 
Coming back to our frame insertion benchmark from the beginning, let's see how NRVMEM compares against Linux. Just to reiterate, x-axis in the figure shows the number of cores and y-axis shows the throughput in million operations per second. As we can see in the figure, NRVMEM throughput stays stable even for a large number of cores. Even though NRVMEM performs much better than Linux on almost 100x at scale, NR still puts a lock on the VMEM structures and, and avoids contention by allowing only one active combiner at each replica at a time. Now, before we stop here, let's also compare against some scalable operating systems. If we compare against other state-of-the-art systems like Perlfish or SV6, we see that they perform much better because they make commutative operations scale. For example, Barrelfish performs 10x and SV6 performs almost 100x better than NRVMEM. Luckily, to improve the NROS performance for commutative writes, we can extend node replication to exploit commutativity among the operations too. We call this version of NR CNR. Let's see how CNR exploits the commutativity. CNR uses multiple logs and asks developers to provide log mapper functions to distribute operations among multiple logs. The log mapper uses the commutativity between the operations for the mapping. Two operations are commutative if the end result is the same irrespective of the execution order of these operations. Otherwise, the operations are conflicting. Two commutative operations can map to different logs, but Two conflicting operations should always map to the same log. We find that partitioning the sequential data structure works well. For example, NROS partitions page table by individual PML4 entries, so each 512 GB region is modified by a different log and combiner. With CNR, we can scale updates for a large number of cores. In the figure, we compare CNR VMEM with Barrelfish and SV6. For this partition workload, CNR VMEM performs better than Barrelfish. And for the first socket, CNR VMEM is comparable to SV6. CNR VMEM throughput stays stable after the first socket and stops to scale because it actively replicates all writes, which means other replicas repeat the same work to synchronize their local copy. I presented a high-level description how NROS scales to many cores with NR and CNR using virtual memory as an example. We found that the same approach works well for other kernel systems too, like the file system or the scheduler. You can check our paper to find a description of these implementations. In fact, the paper talks about many interesting challenges and observations that we didn't have time to get into for this presentation. For example, what happens when a replica applied an operation, but now there is no more memory left on other replicas to apply the operation? How does NRVMEM handle reads by the MMU that are in the log, but still not applied at the local replica? How does TLB shoot downs work for this design? How does batching at the combiner affects the latency for various system calls? And finally, how does replication affects memory consumption? In conclusion, kernel development is hard and increasing number of cores and sockets makes it even harder. Our black box techniques simplifies the kernel development as now the developer can again focus on sequential implementations of the kernel structures and our technique make them concurrent and NUMA aware. NR kernel not only simplifies the kernel development, but also performs really well. For a VMEM benchmark, NR kernel performs 100x better than Linux and is comparable to state-of-the-art research systems like Perlfish and SV6. Please check out nrkernel.systems for more information about NROS. Thank you for listening to my talk.